After digging for several hours, experts from Washington University, volunteers, and police of an unidentified little girl today at Washington Park Cemetery. The child was decapitated and left in an abandoned apartment building in North City 30 years ago. While there was a tombstone at the cemetery, the child's remains were not where they were supposed to be. Fox 2 Shirley Washington joins us with more details about why the child's body was exhumed. It is quite a relief. After digging for several hours, the remains of an unidentified little girl buried in March of 1983 are found in Washington Park Cemetery. We found her. I, I, I just praise God that we found her. Hope that they can get the DNA and find out what who she belongs to. The body of the child, an African American between the ages of 8 and 11, is placed in a black SUV and taken to the medical examiner's office to begin the process of identifying her using sophisticated forensic technology that wasn't available 30 years ago. Joe Burgoon, one of the original detectives on the case, is optimistic. Hopefully, uh, we'll do some good with this. So they'll let the Forensic people will be able to do some good with this, and we can find out who she is and where she was from. The little girl, known as Hope, was decapitated and found wearing a yellow sweater with her hands tied behind her back with red and white nylon rope in the basement of a North City apartment building on Clemens 30 years ago. Michael Sanop is shooting a 90-minute documentary about the case. How could a little girl go unidentified for 30 years? No family's come forward, there's been no DNA match, and she has not matched any missing persons report in 30 years. The murder captivated the city and continues to touch people even now. Sanop hopes his documentary will help police get answers to some tough questions. Finding her name, finding out what happened, and of course find out who killed her, whether that person is alive or not. Solve it. Now, I'm told the child's body was still intact, and with all of the testing that needs to be done to determine her identity, officials tell me it could be weeks, maybe months, before they learn anything. Shirley Washington, Fox 2 News. Next on Sightings, police and a psychic detective try to find a child's killer. I've never had a case that affected me in this manner. In St. Louis, she was just Baby Jane, a faceless, nameless nine-year-old murder victim who lay in the county morgue for months, unclaimed and unloved. She was buried in a pauper's grave. That was 11 years ago, and police still don't know who she was or who killed her. To keep the case alive, sightings offered the services of psychic Noreen Renair. In the best of all possible worlds, children are a cherished blessing, a living miracle. They are meant to be loved and nurtured when they are young, set free when they're ready. But this is not the best of all possible worlds, and not all children are treated as a precious gift. In 1983, the decapitated body of a nine-year-old girl was found in the basement of an abandoned building in St. Louis. The building is gone now, its neighbor condemned and forgotten. But St. Louis Police Sergeant Joe Burgoon will never forget what he found here 11 years ago. Where I'm standing at would be approximately where our victim was found. About 3 o'clock in the afternoon, two gentlemen went down in the basement. It was completely dark down there. And one of them had a cigarette lighter and he flicked the lighter on and he observed what appeared to be a body on the floor. He then immediately then turned and ran out and called the police. We responded to that location and in the basement, there was the decapitated body of a young black female. And I was devastated when I saw the body. Uh, no police officer wants to see a child brutally murdered in that fashion. After years on the beat, police officers develop a hard shell. They have to. But this was one case that hit Detective Atkins in the gut. I still get chill bumps when I think about this case. Many nights I've awakened in a sweat, a cold sweat. No parent reported a missing child. No school reported a missing student. When the child was finally laid to rest, there was no funeral. She was just a number on a marker until area school children raised the money to purchase a tombstone 
so we wouldn't forget. It just doesn't make any sense why you would, why you would have to do that to a little girl. When word of the case reached the sightings offices, we immediately called psychic Noreen Renair. Having produced hundreds of clues that have helped solve dozens of police cases, Noreen wanted to help. Using a process called psychometry, she is able to psychically experience the crime herself. I get pictures, they're very disjointed pictures, images, sort of like a, a foggy dream of uh, fading. We arranged for a phone meeting between Detectives Burgoon and Atkins in St. Louis and Noreen in Orlando, Florida. Assisted by hypnotist Walt Steeb, Noreen tries to put herself into the crime scene. She touches the rope found on the dead child and slowly begins to speak as if she were the young victim. Uh, he's holding my hand. I feel like he's holding my left hand. As Noreen moves deeper into her trance, she begins to experience what she believes is the physical and emotional pain of the child. <laughs> okay, I need you to forget the pain, Noreen. Go beyond the pain. My chest is hurting me as I'm being strangled. Noreen had no prior knowledge of the case. She was told only that the victim was a young female found decapitated. Any, any other uh, body damage that would indicate some other cause of death other than decapitation? First. Mm -hmm. She was... She was manually strangled, and then, then uh, after death, she was decapitated. That's what the medical examiner tells us. Her accuracy was compelling to the detectives who had been openly skeptical before the session. I'll accept the help of a psychic, although I'm not optimistic. Uh, the semen was, uh, I don't know if there's types of semen. Or uh, it, it tells if semen could tell blood type. Can we get any verification on what I've said so far? Well, there was semen found. The detectives had many unanswered questions. They hoped Noreen could answer. Where was she killed? Where the river and the border is. The river goes up and down. Do you see the bridge crossing this river? I do. I see the bridge. There's a very strong B in, in, in the name. Would, would the name Brooklyn mean anything to you? Yes. Belleville? Noreen's psychic vision affirmed the detective's theory that the child was killed out of state, then dumped in St. Louis. But where was she from? Who was her family? Noreen began to answer the detectives as if the child was speaking through her. Your mother and father? My mother did things that some people would think was wrong. Sometimes I saw her crying and they tied something around her arm and it was rubber like and then they put something. If the parents were involved in illegal activities they might not phone the police when their daughter disappeared. But what about her school? Wouldn't they report a missing child? Who was your favorite teacher? My teacher took me. My teacher took me. Your teacher took you? My teacher took me. It's my teacher. The detectives asked Noreen to give them more details about the teacher. Got uh, kicked out of the service so I would have a dishonorable discharge. A police composite artist was called to the meeting to get a physical description of the supposed killer. Uh, the face shape itself would be long. I can see his forehead, so his hair must go back away from his forehead. The eyes are smaller, more close set. Noreen's intriguing leads have given the case new life. Perhaps soon, little Jane Doe won't be just a date of death on a blank tombstone. And the person who killed her will be punished for what he has done. I've never had a case that uh, affected me in this manner. And that still continues to affect me. And I would give anything to have this case solved. Here's another look at the artwork based on Noreen Renner's psychic visions. Because of leads she's provided, the St. Louis Police Department has reactivated this case. If you have any information about Baby Jane, 
please contact the Homicide Division of the St. Louis Police Department.